In this video, we're continuing on with chapter 23, doing section 7, and discussing Gauss's law um, of a cylinder or a, a infinite line of charge. Okay, so figure, uh, the figure shows that a section of an infinitely long cylindrical plastic rod with a uniform positive linear charge density of lambda. Um, let us find an expression for the magnitude of the electric field E at a distance r away from the axis of the rod. All right, so if we're trying to find the electric field at a distance r away, uh, which is shown in here, we also show it up here. We're going to create our Gaussian surface around this line of charge. Um, and the electric field E is going to be the same at every point on the surface as it's equidistance away from the charge. Um, okay, and we also know that it's going to be directed outwards because it's a positive charge. So the flux through E, um, through the the flux of E, excuse me, through this cylindrical surface uh, is going to be shown with our equation for flux. So flux is equal to uh, just our electric field times our area um, multiplied by the cosine of theta because it's E dot A. And cosine of theta. And that's going to be equal to E times the area of the cylinder, which is just 2 pi R, which is the circumference of the cylinder uh, multiplied by h, which is the height of the cylinder. And that's going to be times the cosine of zero because the electric field and the area vector are both pointing in the same direction. So they're both pointing out, um, yeah, out away from the surface, um, so that the cosine of the angle between them is just going to be one. So this just goes to one right here. Okay. Um, so really this flux just simplifies to e times 2 pi r h. Okay. Um, now we want to take our the other equation we have for flux, which, uh, which is Gauss's law. It relates it to the enclosed charge. Uh, so we have epsilon naught times our flux is going to be equal to our enclosed charge. Now plugging in what we just got for flux is going to be e times 2 pi rh. That's equal to the enclosed charge. Well, the enclosed charge um, is also going to be equal to uh, the linear charge density times the height. So it's going to be the linear charge density times the height because linear charge density, right? Because if you remember, um, linear charge density is just q over the length, well, the length of our cylinder in this case uh, is going to be h, or, or of the rod, so it's just h. All right, so really it's just q over h. Um, so if I wanted to write this in terms of q, um, or excuse me, if I wanted to replace q, I would just have the linear charge density uh, times h. Okay. Now if you look at this, we can see that the h is going to cancel. So the height actually doesn't matter. Um, so what we're left with is epsilon naught times e times 2 pi r is equal to our linear charge density. And um, you can just rearrange this for e to find what the electric field is going to be. So that's just going to be lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught times r. So this is going to be the electric field due to a line of charge. Uh, a very long line of charge, like an infinitely long line of charge. Okay, so let's do an example problem. An upward streamer in a lightning storm. So the woman in the figure was standing on a lookout platform in the Sequoia National Park when a large storm cloud moved overhead. Some of the conduction electrons in her body were driven into the ground by the cloud's negatively charged base leaving her positively charged. You can tell she was highly uh, you can tell she was highly charged because her hair strands repelled one another and extended away from her along the electric field lines produced by the charge on her. Um, so it's giving you an explanation of the pictures. So in, the, in a, a, they're just showing that some of the conduction electrons in a woman's body are driven to the ground. So you see these little charges E here. Uh, in picture B, an upward streamer develops if the air undergoes electrical breakdown, which provides a path for electrons freed from molecules in the air to move to the woman. So you have this 
electrons leaving, so you have this electrical breakdown of electrons uh, coming towards her. <clears throat> and then part C is just, well, we're going to represent the woman as a cylinder because that just makes it easier. All right, um, so continuing on. Let's model her body as a narrow vertical cylinder of, of length L, uh, which is 1.8 meters, which is her height, and a radius of 0.1 meters. Assume that charge Q was uniformly di distributed along the cylinder and that the electrical breakdown would have occurred if the electric field magnitude along her body had exceeded the critical value, which they're giving you. So our critical value in this case is 2.4 meganewtons divided by coulombs. What value of Q would have <clears throat> put the air along her body on the verge of breakdown? Okay, so something to think about. Well, since R is much less than L, we can approximate the charge distribution um, for a long line of charge. So basically, we can use the equation that we just derived. Um, since it's uniformly distributed, <clears throat> that also lets us use this equation. All right, so for the calculations, we're going to substitute the critical value E, C, for E, uh, the cylinder radius R for the radial distance R, and the ratio Q over L for our linear charge density, lambda. All right, so what does this look like? Right, so really, it's just going to turn into, and this is um, using the equation that we just derived in the previous slide, and that is shown right here. It's going to be Q over L, which was our charge density, linear charge density, 2 pi times epsilon naught times big R. Okay, Rearrange this for Q, because that's what we're trying to solve for. It's just going to get 2 pi epsilon naught times big R times EC. Okay. Now we want to plug everything in, all of our values. So Q is going to be equal to, uh, let's see, it's 2 pi times epsilon naught, so 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared. times our radius, which is 0.1 meters, times our, um, times our length, oops, I forgot an L in here, times our length, which is 1.8 meters, times E, which is our critical electric field, so 2.4 times 10 to the 6th newtons per coulomb, all right, because it was mega newtons per coulomb. All right, plugging this into a calculator, we get 2.402 times 10 to the negative 5th coulombs. Okay, that's it for this lecture.